the Centre of Sports Engineering Research in Sheffield Hallam University, they are working with a number of sports manufacturers and organisations. Their work here combines cutting-edge science and engineering to test and improve the performance of sports equipment. We do research here on things like football dynamics uh, and what we can do is we can get the footballer to kick the football in, in different places, track where they kick it and then track how fast the ball flies off the foot and what kind of spin you get off a foot for different kicking styles. And that's useful because we can either help the athlete perform differently or we can actually help the manufacturers tune the designs uh, of footballs uh, in their manufacturing process. Football designs have altered a lot over the last 30 years. Materials, numbers of panels and even the shape of the ball have all changed. Now these panels are actually pre-shaped, so rather than being a flat shape, they're pre-shaped and it's more like putting together a plastic model uh, with uh, an inflated sphere in the middle. What it means is you can get a very, very smooth ball if you try. Now that's not particularly good for a football, and what the manufacturers have done is you might just be able to see they put back in these mock seams, uh, which they called uh, aero grooves, to simulate the old seams of you know, the 1950s football. And they've also got a little bit of roughness on there, which is a tactile effect, so that when you hold the ball, you can really grip it, either in wet or dry conditions. Probably one of the best engineered footballs there has ever been, uh, but of course, you know, that doesn't stop it getting criticised by the players. The team use computer models to help them understand the aerodynamics of football flight. One of the things you sometimes see is a knuckleball effect. And that happens when you've got a ball that has very little spin on it. And what happens is the ball flies through the air and it flutters a little bit through the air. And we did see that in the World Cup uh, with this ball, but also it happens uh, quite a lot anyway. And so what happens is it flutters from side to side because of these asymmetrical aerodynamic forces. Um, the ball can change direction and end up in a place which is really unpredictable and goalkeepers hate that. In other sports, such as golf, they have other variables to consider, such as ball and club. What the manufacturer is trying to do is make it as easy as possible for the golfer to get this bit, which is the end of the golf club, to interact with this bit, the ball, and get this ball to fly as far as possible generally uh, and into the hole. Um, and what happens is when the uh, golf club comes down, it hits the ball, the ball effectively rolls up the golf club because it's angled and the ball comes off with a little bit of backspin, well actually quite a lot of backspin, up to something like 10,000 RPM sometimes. That backspin gives the ball lift and allows that ball to fly quite a long way. Now the manufacturers, what they do is they've got say a two-piece ball uh, like this where you've got a hard surface on the inside and a softer surface on the outside and that compresses this soft surface against these grooves uh, of the golf club. The design of the grooves affects how the two things interact and the surface of the golf ball affects how the two things interact. And there's quite a lot of compression in this golf ball when it hits uh, that surface. In racket and ball sports, such as tennis, it's the physics of impact testing that plays a crucial role in analysing equipment. They've looked at testing the ball impact with the racket, flight through the air and the impact of the ball with the surface. What that's allowed us to do is to create quite complex mechanical models based on Newton's laws which can make predictions. So if anyone comes up with a new piece of equipment, uh, we look at that new piece of equipment, we stick it into our models and we make predictions of how that might change the nature of the game. So the, the kind of work they were doing is really the fundamentals um, of the physics of tennis but it goes directly into setting the rules of the game worldwide. Their methods have proved so effective that it's actually led to a change in the rules of the game. We put all our mechanical models together into one piece of software called Tennis Gut that allows us to look at the effects of different things uh, about the game. In this case, it was the size of the ball. And we increased the size of the ball between 3 and 6% to see how that would affect the nature of the game. And of course, what happens if you increase the size of the ball, you've got more drag on that ball because it's larger and it slows down more. And that's exactly the effect that the International Tennis Federation wanted, which was in cer certain circumstances to slow the game down. So uh, we've taken our experiments, put it into our mathematical model, and it's now ended up in the laws of the game. <laughs>